Hello, I am Alexis Wagoner. For those of you who haven't gotten tired of seeing me host these, I am um, the Marketing and Digital Education Director for Westar. And today I'm talking to Margaret Aline Morse, who is one of our longtime members as, as part of this kind of initiative that we're doing to talk to our membership, to introduce them to each other, as well as to our broader community of interested people and supporters and all those sorts of things. So. Margaret, I will kind of let you maybe say a little bit about yourself and then talk a little bit about what brought you to Westar. Sure. Um, well, I was thinking back uh, about what did bring me to Westar, mm -hmm. and it actually scrolls all the way back to the mid-1980s. Wow. And um, I, uh, I had just finished up grad school, and um, I came back to Denver and was sitting at my first job at a magazine, reading the Denver Post, and there was an article about the search for the historical Jesus. And I said, oh my goodness, I, I have to know more about this. And, um, and uh, so back then there was really no internet. <laughs> Maybe there was, but I wasn't associated with it yet. So there's no internet. So what I did was I went down to the tattered covered bookstore and I started looking. Um, I had some names from the Denver Post article, which I wish I still had, but I don't, I oh, look yeah. at my files, I don't see it, but maybe, maybe it's still there. Um, and I was looking at the, uh, the books of, um, of um, uh, Bob Funk and John Dominic Crossan and Marcus Borg. And I, I'm sure I went home with a whole stack of them because my <laughs> bookshelf is filled. And I don't know how I got the address of um, Westar, but I'm guessing it was something and I'm sure I sent an envelope and I wanted instantly to be an associate member. And, um, and to explain why I had that interest in it, I need to give a little bit of backstory about uh, my own spiritual journey. So um, I was brought up in a, a family where all the adults were agnostics and atheists. Wow. And, uh, yeah, maybe a little <laughs> non-traditional for Westar. And um, I really was spiritually, I was a tabula rasa. Mm. And um, uh, which, you know, every, every kind of life has its advantages if you look through the right lens. And for mm. me, it was actually a wonderful place to be. Um, it was very difficult growing up not having that kind of support system. But when I look back, um, um, I see the advantages of it. Um, and so when I was in grad school, actually, I have, a, I have a theory about graduate school in general, that one of the things it does, um, it, in, amongst many is to break us down mm -hmm. so that it can build us up again mm -hmm. and sometimes it builds us up in a very specific kind of a way and sometimes more mm -hmm. open-ended but anyway there I was in my state of brokenness in grad school mm -hmm. from the <laughs> teaching and you know learning and you know everything that was going on mm -hmm. and in that state of brokenness I had an experience that I didn't have words for mm. and I um, it was nothing in my schema whatsoever mm -hmm. and um, uh, because I'm a scholar by uh, uh, by DNA and just by personality I set out to research what this might be and I mm -hmm. went in all different directions I knew that it was it was something to do with the divine but I'm like what's that you know I don't know anything about that mm -hmm. and uh, and then it, it wasn't until I met Marcus Borg and we talked a few times and then we emailed back and forth and he gave me a word to really fine tune what I had, which was a mystical experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was calling it spiritual awakening, which is another way, but really the, the mystical piece. And, um, and so uh, what I love about my kind of unusual history is that my encounter with the divine was direct. I, I, there were no intermediaries. Wow. And, um, and so very authentic, um, of course, didn't even know what it was in the beginning. And so when I heard about um, the Jesus seminar, looking for the historical Jesus, I thought, oh my goodness, because I had, you know, I'd been to all different kinds of churches. I've been to you know, Catholic, Protestant, temples, mosques for decades now. I've, I've just been a spiritual itinerant and explorer mm -hmm. um, so I, I i thought if i could have that kind of authentic relationship with that radical mystic named jesus mm -hmm. the same way i have with god wouldn't that be something 
So this is back again in the mid, and now we're getting into the late 80s. And so, so of course, that's why West Star just like, and when I became a, so I instantly became an associate member and, um, and it truly, Alexis was like coming home to a place I didn't even know existed. Mm. I, I had a community, I had a spiritual community that, um, uh, that wasn't afraid to keep its thinking cap on, that thought that inquiry uh, and academic inquiry especially was um, part of a faith journey. And so it was just a very, and I lived at that time in a very conservative town in, by later on, I was in a conservative town in the Eastern Plains of Colorado. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell the people I knew about this. <laughs> so that's one of the many reasons we ended up moving on to Denver because um, I wanted to be around people who I could fully express who I, who I am. And mm -hmm. um, so, so really that's the headwaters for my time with, with West Star. Okay. That's so cool. And it's interesting in the other conversations I've had too with people, that idea of community just like pops up over and over again. I mean, whether or not like it's, it sounds in your context, like it was, you know, a lifeline kind of, cause you weren't in a place where that was happening anywhere else. But even for people that have had a little bit more freedom in their day to day life, just still all those things that you mentioned, like the the, the in, spirit of inquiry and the um, openness to different ideas, whether even even outside of the academy or you know inviting the the associates who are not necessarily religious scholars, quote unquote, into that community and having that space for everyone to kind of just like percolate together has been right. really important. Yeah, right. And what's wonderful is that. Um, West Star seems to like Colorado, so I've had the opportunity to go to a lot of Jesus seminars on the road. Mm -hmm. I think three or four, probably not five, but, um, mm -hmm. and then of course, what's coming up next month, um, yeah. you know, everyone converging on Denver, that's pretty Yeah, cool. yeah. And it's, I mean, it sounds like as this process of, of kind of spiritual awakening and, um, and finding West Star and all that sort of stuff was happening. You were in the process of education, but I'm assuming not in any sort of religious field. It just happened kind of in tandem with your own, like you said, grad school and things like that. Right. I mean, having, having, um, well, I'm a, I'm a journalist by training. My, mm -hmm. my bachelor's is in English and French. My master's is in mm -hmm. journalism and creative writing. And so okay. in grad school, I learned, um, all the modes of inquiry that one might have. And so it's really helped me with my research. And um, in addition to being a member of uh, West Arm, a member of the Biblical Archaeology Society mm -hmm. and SOAR, American Schools of Oriental Research. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I've been able to tap into um, the work of so many religious and historical scholars. And, um, mm -hmm. and um, um, I did think about going to seminary. Um, <laughs> we have Isla. The island yes, yes. Denver and I, a very good friend of ours, um, the man who married my husband and me, the pastor, he was a graduate of ILF. And mm -hmm. so I, you know, and I've taken various things at ILF. So, but no, I thought, you know, I've done enough schooling. I was raising three children and oh, another, wow. another, you know, seminar sounded interesting, but I just needed to do it on my own and, and do take tend to other parts of my life. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, good, good for you. That's so interesting to hear kind of everybody's, yeah, everybody's journey and um, where West Stars fit in with that, regardless of official profession or, or anything like that. And I understand you have a book coming out shortly yeah. if you wanted to just i don't know plug that talk about that a little bit i'm just interested sure. to hear more um so i've been a writer uh, a professional writer ever since grad school which you can date that based on when i <laughs> learned about west star um, and, but for the first time i've written a book and so um uh and i've i've sent it out to a publishing contest i have another one for january and so i will find a publisher for it and that's what i'm in the process for i mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and the name of it is Finding Her Voice. And mm -hmm. it is a deeply researched historical account of the lives of two women from 1800 BCE. That's my best guess. If anyone listening to this can give me a better time for the lives of Sarah and Hagar. Mm -hmm. And so I know that there's some people who think that 
Sarah and Hagar, uh, you know, it comes from a place of inerrant truth. There's some people who think they're archetypes. I'm good with all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, as Marcus Borg once said, you, you don't have to um, so much look for whether something is true or not, but what truths it can teach us. Yeah. And so either way, I think that um, that my book has something to offer. And, and, and what it has to offer is the voices of these two women. It's a braided narrative. Um, I have immersed myself in that time and place. And you can look at a book in many ways, but one way to look at my book is these are the Me Too stories that we should have been discussing all along. Mm. Uh, because uh, Sarah was thrown under the caravan by Abraham uh, twice, not just once, <laughs> not just on the border of Egypt, but also the king of Gerar. And, and then Hagar, of course, she didn't consent to giving a child to Abraham. And just as slaves in America in the 1800s, that was not consensual. And so it's, it's the same thing. And so uh, there's so, so it's historical fiction because the accounts of women in the Bible are always just bare bones. They are so skeletal that you have to flesh them out. And yeah. I have done it in every case with as much attention to historical and archeological detail as I can. And then I've had to um, go from there and yeah. add depth and emotion. So, yeah. um, and then just one other, uh, one other piece is it's, the book is part of a paired, uh, no paired novels. And the second one is actually getting where I began is I'm going to be doing a story about Mary and Martha of Bethany and Mary Magdalene. Because going back to that historical Jesus that first drew me to West Stars, mm -hmm. that's where my love of, of biblical history really, really began. And, and, um, and so, again, this will be a braided narrative. Hagar and, and Sarah's stories are braided narratives. And then the three women will have a, a, a triple braid. So. I, that is, I love that. That is so fascinating. And just so interesting, too, how you've woven your your passions together from the writing and the biblical and the history and the Jesus stuff, like all, I imagine that's been quite a, a lot of work for you, but I imagine very fulfilling as well to see that all come together. Well, I think that's what those of us who are blessed with a long enough life to have these things come to fruition. I think we're all trying to take our many, we all have many talents, many of them disparate, but if we can, eventually pull them all into something and then look back and go, oh, that's why I had that job. It right. helped me be a public speaker, or, you know, no matter how bad of a job it was. And so it helps us to see that our journey is going somewhere and we obviously have to play a role in that. But it, the meaning starts to really rise up toward the end. Yeah. Not that I'm at the end of my life. But no, no. <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully yeah. not. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Margaret. It's so fascinating to talk to you and um, learn a little bit more about you. And I'm sure everyone will also enjoy that as well. So thanks again for taking the time. My pleasure. And thank you for your part in getting the word out about West Star because your um, energy is enlivening it. Oh, well, thank and, get, and getting the word out, bringing it into the 21st century. Yeah, of course. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. All right.